All right, so something funny happened. You know, I'm your humble Yo YouTube channel person here, and uh, I'm still learning how to film and do this format. And I forgot to turn my phone in airplane mode. So someone called in, it was actually the San Francisco Unified School District to tell us that school is closed for the rest of the year. And they cut the video feed off. And uh, the second half of the class was amazing and I feel bad that you didn't get it. So I feel kind of tired, but uh, I feel inspired to continue the teachings of my teacher. So um, I'm just gonna jump right into uh, the reading of Sharon's and um, and then we'll finish the second half of the yoga practice with triangle on the other side, okay? No harm, no foul. Just doing the best I can to offer you this free yoga. We'll just reset, restart with Om and Shanti. cat hair. Sorry about that. All right, so we're going to continue with our reading of Sharon's beautiful book, The Magic Ten and Beyond, Daily Spiritual Practices for Greater Peace and Well-Being. You know, in week one, we talked about gratitude. In the morning, getting up, maybe still lying in bed with the eyes closed, and just start to list all of the things that you were grateful for. Right? All the things that you still have today. So many things have been taken to remove from our daily lives. But instead of focusing on that, focus on the things that remain in your life today. You know, I'm so grateful for my teachers and the teachings. I'm so grateful for my children. You know, I'm, I'm grateful for the experience of experiencing the grief of losing my mother just over a month ago. You know, all these things are important now to remember. I'm, a, I'm grateful I can be of service to others. Um, so yeah, week one, we. We awaken the way through gratitude. In our second week, she gives us the practice of blessing the way, and of giving blessings to those in our lives, to being of service to those in our lives. Um, you know, thinking of people that we have discord with, and I think of the St. Francis prayer, think of the opposite. How can you uplift others? How can you change your perception of others? Sharon says by giving blessings. The third week's about feeding the birds, which is really beautiful teaching. It's about being of service to others, to extending your hands with an offering. You know, in the backyard here, we have this big, beautiful orange planter. There's a beautiful tree planted in it. And uh, it almost feels like it was 10 years ago that my mother-in-law passed away. And she was a lifetime Zen Buddhist, um, part of the San Francisco community here. And uh, in her backyard, in her beautiful garden, she had this beautiful, next to the Jam Japanese oak tree, a beautiful Buddha statue, this big stone statue. We moved her assisted living. She uh, brought the statue with her and created a little Zen garden on her porch and the, the Buddha came with her. And then when she passed away, I asked if I could have the Buddha. And I took that Buddha and put him under the tree in our backyard. And he's always there. He's always. He sits there through the ups and downs. He remains steady and joyful throughout. Uh, we place bird seeds out by him every day. And the birds love to be with him and eat the bird seeds. In the morning when I get up, I love to be the one up that feeds the cats. You know, they are birds. I love to prepare food and cook for uh, my children and my wife and for friends. I like to um, cook for my client. And it's all this expression of taking care of others. It's really important. Nourishing the way. All right, so that brings us to week four, where Sharon gives us connecting to the way, asana. The Sanskrit word asana means seat. A seat is a connection to the earth, implying a relationship. 
The Egyptian hieroglyph representing goodness, Isis, is a seat, an abstract chair. And this photonic sound is st, like the Sanskrit root word sht, which means stability. The English word steady is related. The ancient Egyptian worshipped the quality of steady connectedness to its relationship to the earth that their goddess Isis embodied. To them, she personified the ability to connect perfectly in a relationship. It was Isis who, the power, who through the power of love, was able to reassemble the dismembered body of her husband, Osiris, and bring him back to life. She was able to do that because she remembered goodness, the goodness of her eternal soul and the soul's power of love. Asana practice can bring us to yoga by helping to purify our relationship to the earth and to all beings. Patanjali in the Yoga Sutras says that our asana, our seat, our connection to the earth should be stira, steady, sukham, joyful. Our relationship to the earth should be mutually beneficial. It should benefit ourselves and others. Our lives should not be lived selfishly. If we desire yoga to remember connection to the Supreme Self, everything we do, including our yoga practice, must be done selflessly with conscious intention to let go of negative tendencies, to urge us to hurt others, and to see ourselves as victims. Selfishness disconnects us from the yogi's way. Is asana a physical or spiritual practice? The practice of yoga must, be, must have a physical body. You must have a physical body. Your intention while you are practicing asana will determine the result of the practice. And your thoughts are the most powerful force working upon you. For an asana practice to be a spiritual practice, the practitioner has to intend it to be. Many people to choose to practice yoga asanas only to improve their level of physical fitness, and there is nothing wrong with that. But for those of you who want more, asana has more to offer. The practice can bring you to enlightenment. How? By helping you to shift your perception of yourself and others. Asana can be therapeutic practice that improves our relationships. Karma means action. We act in relationship to others. Everything we think, say, and do involves us with others, other people, animals, trees, plants, and the overall environment. Even our relationship with ourselves is affected by our relationships with others. How we perceive ourselves is dependent on our relationship with others. Others can hurt our feelings. If we feel that someone we admire doesn't like us, we may worry and start to think that we are somehow flawed. Whereas experiencing support and encouragement from others can give us confidence and make us feel invincible. It is natural to want to be respected and loved. Relationships that are one-sided are not considered good relationships. If we want to be loved, we must love. If we want to be forgiven, we must forgive. Whatever we want for ourselves, we should make happen for others. This consideration must extend to all others and even to the earth and the environment. To treat others as we want to be treated is the way to establish mutually beneficial relationships, relationships that are steady and joyful. The practice of asana is designed to purify our relationships and is indeed a very physical practice, but with deep emotional and spiritual potential. One of the, thing I, one of the things I love about Sharon, I've known her for a couple of decades now, is that she never tires. She's always on point. She's very clear and eloquent in her thought and speech on the subject of God realization, on yoga, on enlightenment. And she just gets up every day and year after year and she gives us new material could be in form of music could be in form of a book could be in form of a workshop a practice a visit and it's always the same message it's always the same teachings of yoga and i love her for that thank you for giving us this beautiful example of being a selfless servant to god the karmas generate our interactions with others, are stored in the tissues of our bodies. In fact, it is our karmas that actually make up our bodies. So moving the body through asana practice with the intention of purifying our karmas, resolving relationship issues, will help us feel more comfortable in our bodies, resulting in more happiness. When our connection to the earth and all others is mutually beneficial, we are on our way to yoga. True self-realization, the realization of the oneness of being, where others disappears, otherness disappears. In week four, we focus, uh, the focus is on asana and we practice the magic 10, a series of 10 simple asanas that can be done in about 10 minutes. 
The magic 10 moves the spine in all the various ways that the spine can move. For this reason, it is an effective physical, physically therapeutic daily exercise program that keeps the spine limber and the joints mobile, as well as toning muscle and internal organs. The practice will also stimulate the endocrine system, instigating a release of natural feel-good chemicals such as dopamine. It is akin to accessing your own physical pharma pharmaceutical laboratory, and the good news is no negative side effects. <laughs> Undertaken with intention, the asana practice can also act as a powerful psychotherapeutic transformational tool with the potential to integrate body, mind, and the spirit. The tightness, weakness, and pain that we can encounter when doing asanas are physical symptoms hinting at possible deeper emotions, emotions uh, emotional causes such as anger, resentment, and blame. For example, if you experience difficulty balancing it, in a standing asana like downward facing dog, an unresolved karmic issue with a parent might be indicated. Or if a back bending asana is hard, as in tabletop, where you need to stretch your chest and open your heart, and the inability to forgive someone in your life who has hurt you may be the root cause. Even though it is possible through the practice of asana to heal the relationships and move towards enlightened awareness, don't make the mistake of thinking that if someone is really strong and flexible, that they must have great relationships and be enlightened. Intention is deciding factor, what we are thinking about when we do the practice. Asana, like any other activity, can be done for ego enhancement, alone and not contribute to all, to more steadiness and joy in our relationships to the earth and with other beings. That being said, asana practice does have the potential to transform us into a kinder people and even move us closer to yogic realization. If we choose to approach it in that way, because unresolved psychological karmic issues with others are often held in the body. If we have the patience to place our body into a position, stay there for some time and breathe consciously while maintaining a positive frame of mind that is free of negativity, we can begin to reconnect to our physical, energetic, emotional, intellectual, and even spiritual selves. This reintegration will result in more peace, calmness, joy, and ease, and less disconnection, stress, worry, and fear. Eventually, we may even start to notice an improvement in our relationships with others. I call it the Magic 10 because I think of the magic as we shift in perception. After completing the series, you experience your perception of yourself and others in a more optimistic light. You may even begin to see that through connecting to yourself and others in a more positive way, there is nothing standing in the way of your achieving happiness. Indeed, everything and everyone in your life will provide you with the way. The practice. Before beginning the first asana, mentally state a positive, selfless intention to guide you through the series. Here are a few examples. Through this practice, may I be able to let go of the toxic physical and emotional poisons that I am holding in my body. May this practice help to free me from anger, jealousy, and fear so I can be more loving, forgiving, and kind to others. May this practice help me to become an instrument of God's will. May this practice help me to enhance the lives of others. May this practice shift my perceptions of myself and others so that I may come to see my enemies as friends, help me to develop patience and forgiveness. There are 10 exercises in the Magic 10 series. Follow the instructions, breathe evenly in and out through your nose and your mouth, close and your jaw relax, silently continuing each breath. Here's an option she gives us, more devotional. Instead of counting the breaths using numbers, insert a mantra. For example, each time you inhale, silently say Hari Om. While exhaling, count from one to 10. Whatever suggested breath count is. You could replace that with let go. You could replace that with a prayer like Loka, Samasta, Suki no Bhavan too. Sharon, thank you so much. We love you so much. So when my video got cut off, I realized after I taught the whole class, I kind of felt a little let down and I was going to give up. I said, you know what? I'm not going to do it today. I'll just have to reshoot this another day. But then I thought of all the people right now that are struggling, having a difficult time. I said, you know what? Who cares if I'm underslept? Who cares if I feel tired now because half the video wasn't shot properly because I forgot to set the functions on the phone? I'm going to just dig a little bit deeper. I'm gonna use the asana practice and the teachings to help uplift me and motivate me to continue to teach. 
So here's the second half of the asana practice. And uh, I think we left off from where I saw the video. In triangle pose. So let's get reestablished. <laughs> I bow to my teachers. I'm going to look for part of the playlist here. All right, here we go. All right, so we did our triangle pose on the right side. We're going to inhale, come up. We're going to change position. You can bring your hands to your hips, change position of your feet, right toes forward, left toes in. Inhale the arms to shoulder height. Exhale, reach forward and down. Let the right hand land wherever it's going to land. Don't distort the hips or move the seat back. Keep everything nice alignment so you can then just extend the left arm up. Complete the pose with your gaze, holding here, inhale. Exhale, one. Inhale. Exhale, two. Inhale. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. Inhale. Exhale, five. Inhale, come all the way up. And then step or jump the feet together. You know what the video cutting off did for me is it gave me some humility. And in yoga asana practice and yoga practice, humility is gold. Anything that's going to push that high, uh, lower self down, that ego is in itself, it's going to give space for that higher self to rise up and do something like recommit to teaching the class again. So thank you for this opportunity. That. All right, we're gonna do that. Okay, so step or jump your feet together, hands to prayer. Think of one of the suggestions Sharon gave us. I offer myself to thee to make me an instrument of thy will. Om Shanti. Inhale, bend your knees deeply, lift the prayer up. Utkatasana. Exhale, diving forward, place your hands down. Inhale, come to a flat back, look up. Exhale, step or jump back, slowly lower, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, back, downward facing dog. Inhale, step your right foot forward, turn your left heel down. Lift the prayer overhead, warrior one. And then you're going to hold here. Inhale. Exhale, one, relax the shoulders, lift the chest. For two, find your gaze towards the thumbs as you lift the prayer up. For three. Inhale, straighten your right leg. You're going to release your arms alongside the hips, and you're going to interlace your hands here. We're going to move into Humble Warrior. It's hard to interlace the hands. The thing that I've used for many decades is just a towel. I can use it to wipe the sweat off my brow, but also use it as a prop. You're going to inhale, lift the chest, look up. Exhale, re-bend the right knee. Draw the right, uh, draw your fore, uh, top of the head towards the instep of the right foot. Inhale, exhale, one. Inhale, exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, four. Inhale, exhale, five. From here, you're gonna place your hands to the instep of your right foot. You can turn the right toes out, turn the left heel up. And you can stand the hands the way to advance the heart forward or drop down onto your forearms. If you wanna bring the back knee to the floor at any point, even with the hands on the floor, that's a good option. Keep the gaze a little bit in front of you. Continue to breathe here. Inhale. Exhale, one. Breathing for five. This is my time. You never want to see the light. Major laser. All right, coming back onto your hands. Suck the back toes under. Step back downward, facing dog. Option to stay here, go through the vinyasa one time on your own. Like breath and movements. We'll try the other side. Inhale, step your right foot forward. Turn your left heel down, lift the prayer of her head, veer Vidrasana one. And then holding here, find your gaze placed beyond the thumbs, relax the shoulders down, open the heart. Exhale one. Inhale. Exhale, two, inhale, exhale, three. From here, you're gonna straighten the front leg. Release the arms alongside the body. Interlace your hands behind you, draw the arms long, lift the chest, 
Exhale, re-bend the knee, draw the top of the head towards the instep. Like we just did the right side. See that? I'm tired. I should do the left side. All right, let's come back to downward facing dog. Sorry, everyone. Shake the head out. See more humility. I'm not perfect. Yay! All right, left foot steps forward, right heel turns down. Lift the prayer of our head, warrior one. Hold and breathe here. Again, you can think of OM as a way to reset. OM, inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, begin to draw the top of the head towards the instep of the left foot. And breathing here, inhale, exhale, one, inhale, exhale, two, inhale, exhale, three, inhale, exhale, four, inhale, exhale, five, release your hands to the instep of the left foot, turn your left toes out, right heel up, if you want to again, drop the back knee to the floor, this is a good variation, or come on to your forearms, Again, use the traction of the form to pull the chest forward. Breathing here, five breaths. Two. Exhale, four. Inhale a breath. Exhale, five. Place your hands down, tuck the back toes under, step back, downward facing dog. Option to stay here or go through the vinyasa one time on your own. Come directly into child's pose, we're all gonna meet. Just take a moment here, relax and let go. Again, think of your intention as you do the practice. And get away from wanting just better biceps. We are going to move into a little inversion practice. We're going to work on sheer sauce and a headstand practice. If I see a lot of new students, they just kind of pass by. They don't want to even attempt the half pose. But it's okay to do things that are difficult. It's okay to do things that are challenging. It's okay to show up for yourself in that way and others. So let's try the half pose, even if you find it difficult. I'll walk you through the beginning steps. You have an option to stay there. You can come further into the full pose if you follow along. So first, interlace your hands. You're going to bring your elbows a little bit closer than shoulder distance. Top of the head on the floor behind your hands. Tuck the toes under, straighten the legs, and walk the feet in. At this point, I want you to lift the head off the floor an inch. So 100% of the weight is in the arms. You want 80% of the weight in the arms for headstands. So lower the head just that 20%. Shoulder blades moving away from your ears. And then if you want, walk the feet a little bit closer. And then option to stay here. Just stay here, even if it's a little difficult, and breathe. Hold as long as you can. If you're ready, you want to take it a step further, knee comes in the chest. Stay here. If and when you can lift the other foot off the floor, you're going to bring these together and create this egg shape. Okay, and then if you want, straighten the legs. Come all the way up. Hold and breathe here. When you're deciding to come down, do it consciously, do it slowly. Rest in child's pose. Again, take this opportunity to remember your intention. Thy will, not mine, be done. Breathe in and breathe out. Ready from here, you're gonna to come to hands and to knees. I'm just gonna do a couple of cats and calves. Inhale, lift the head up. Exhale, round the back. Tuck the 
chin in, inhale, round, lift the head, feels really good, exhale, round the back, tuck the chin in, one more time, and exhale, back from here, we're going to lift the knees off the floor, we're going to think about squatting position next. You're going to bend the knees, look forward. You're going to step walk or jump your feet to the outsides of your hands. You're going to set up, set up for your squatting position. Now, it's difficult to keep the heels on the floor. You can either grab your blanket, you can double it up, slide it underneath the heels. You can even sit on a block here if that's helpful. But find the pose you want to be in. Lift the chest, lift the gaze. And we'll take a little twist from here. Left arm out to the left side of the left shin. Take a twist, look over the right shoulder. If you want to bind the pose, drop the right arm behind. Catch hold of the fingertips of the wrist here. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And center. Try the other side, right arm out to the right side of the right shin, extend the left arm up, take a twist, breathing here. Exhale, one, feels so good, inhale. Exhale, two, feels so good to be in my body. For three, inhale. Exhale, four, inhale. Exhale, five, come center, hands to prayer. From here, we're gonna move into crow practice. So, you know, I always tell the students, you can always stop at any point. Just commit to being in one place. So first, you can just come onto hands and knees. Stay here. Spread the fingers wide. Next is to tuck the toes under. You're going to move the knees high into the backs of the arms. You're going to begin to tip the weight equally into the hands. Come onto the toe tips. Stay here. Lift one or both feet off the floor. Stay here. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale, inhale, and exhale. Inhale a breath here, exhale, jump back. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here, shake the head out. Over the lips. You're gonna bend the knees, look forward. Then you stunt, walk or jump through. We're going to set up for our forward seated bend. So come on to the front of the sit bones. Again, you can place a blanket underneath there to help you find a flatter back. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, walk the hands forward. Whatever you can get hold of, grab hold of that. Okay, don't put too much judgment on the pose. Just find your best position. So then you can then think of that intention. Inhale. And together for Mountain Cobbler's Pose. Try to bring your thumbs to the insides of the feet. Open the feet up, lift the chest. Exhale, folding forward, breathing here. Connect to the sound in the breathing. Let the mantra ride on the inhale and exhale. Inhale, let. Exhale, go. Or inhale, loka. Samasta. Exhale, supino. Bhavantu. Lift up. You're going to bend your knees, cross your ankles, hands on either side of your hips. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, step walk or jump back. Slowly lower. Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale back, downward facing dog. 
Inhale, roll forward to plank position. Exhale, knees, chest, shin to the floor, seat is high. Inhale, push through to a low cobra. From here, I want you to bring fingertips in line with the lower ribs. Push the tops of the feet down, breathe here. Exhale, five, release down, turn your face to one side. Just pause here for a moment. Relax and let go, allow Mother Earth to hold you as you purify your relationship with her. Forehead down, Shalabhasana next, this is with straight legs, and head lift head, chest, straight legs off the floor, come up. Inhale, exhale, one. Inhale, exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, four. Inhale, a little bit higher. Exhale, release down. Turn your face to the opposite side. Forehead down, shallow bust in the next with straight legs. Inhale, lift your head, chest, straight legs off the floor. Come up. Inhale, exhale, one. Inhale, exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, four. Inhale, lift a little bit higher. Exhale, release down. Turn your face to the opposite side. Practice relaxing and letting go. All right, forehead down, bend your knees, grab hold of the ankles, down or off in the boat pose next. Inhale, lift your head, chest, knees off the floor, come up. Inhale, exhale, one. Inhale, exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, four. Inhale, exhale, five. Release down, turn your face to the opposite side. Second time, Dhanurasana, forehead down, grab hold of the outside or inside of the ankle, Yogi's choice. Inhale, lift up. Inhale, exhale, one. Inhale, exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, four. Inhale, exhale, release down. Turn your face to the opposite side. Take a few breaths here, if you'd like, gently rock hips from side to side. Whew. <laughs> Two hours of yoga awesome today. It's gonna be good for me, right? A lot of people are gaining a lot of weight in this mandatory shelter in place. I'm gonna lose a little bit of weight today. All right. Starting with a half wheel, you're gonna lie on your back, bring your feet about hip distance apart and parallel. On an inhale, lift your lower, middle, upper back off the floor, and then interlace your hands underneath you, move from shoulder to shoulder, get a little stronger, steady base here. If you wanna grab a block, place it underneath the sacrum, that's an option. Keep the throat open, inhale, exhale, one. Inhale, exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, four. Inhale, exhale, release down. Right, so we're gonna work with this idea of infusing intention into our physical practice. Right, so we're gonna do three more wheels. Before we take our first wheel, I want you to bring your hands to prayer in front of your heart. We'll make the first one easy. Think of someone you love and adore. I'm thinking of my coworker Mirna and her family, her sister Melva, who's a nurse right now in RN, working crazy hours trying to help save lives. So I'm gonna offer this wheel to uplift that whole family. Half wheel on your own, four wheel hands alongside the ears underneath the shoulders, pushing into your hands and feet, cup at the top of the head. We'll come all the way up, 
Hold for five breaths. Tuck the chin in, gently release down. All right, so we started at the heart chakra. We're now gonna move to the throat. Now we're gonna think of someone that we do not like. Someone who could be locally, could be someone nationally, could be someone who's in charge of a lot of our choices right now. And offer that same beautiful, lovely wheel. Right, purify that relationship. You know, you have a choice to be an enlightened being or a victim. That's what Sharon always tells us. So make a choice here. See that other person as an enlightened being. Don't see them as someone that you can use as an excuse to blame, complain, and explain about. Okay, so think of the person. <laughs> I know who I'm thinking of. I'm going to offer this beautiful wheel up to this person. Inhale, come up. You could do something like love and blessings. Say the name for one. Five breaths. Come down. Rest for a moment here. Okay, for this final one, we want to purify the relationship with the highest, right? The hardest thing in my practice today is to remember God throughout the day. So I'm going to bring my hands to prayer right between the eyebrows, Agni Chakra. I'm going to offer this wheel up as a way to inspire me to remember God more throughout the day. Where I find myself in my smallest self, worrying about I, me, and mine, in those moments, I can reach for my higher self and remember God. Thank you, Sharon, for that teaching. Half wheel on your own, four wheel hands alongside the ears underneath the shoulders. Come up, hold for five to eight breaths. Inhale, love and blessings. And then say the name of the highest for you. Once you complete your fifth to eighth breath, come down, draw your knees near your chest, and just rock a little bit from side to side of the lower spine. here. Bring your knees over to the left side as you bring your gaze over to the right side. And here you can just let gravity help do the twisting. See if you could let go. Find some softness in the hardness. Remember who you dedicated your practice to. My mother Jeannie, Maria, her maiden name. <laughs> on her way home to her loving Jesus Christ who she adored more than anything and I offer this practice to her in her journey home bring your knee center exhale your knees over to the right side and bring your gaze over to the left side. What yoga teaches us is we can have one foot firmly established in our inner life with our higher self. And we can also have a foot in the outer life. So even in something like grief or on my mother passing, I can still have connection there. I can still be steady and joyful with that position in the inner life. And I can kind of ride right between the two. I can feel sadness and loss. You know, I miss who I was when she was in the world. That is something that I have lost. She is gone. And I am not that person right now. Becoming sensual. But what comes in place of all of that is more maturity, more groundedness, more established connection to that self. All right, from here we're going to set up 
for our shoulder stand. We're gonna finish up the practice for today with some poses. So if you want for variation, just come to a wall, bring the legs up the wall. If you have a sofa nearby, bring your legs on the sofa. Just lift the knees up. If you have a shoulder stand practice, use padding, set up padding. Make sure you have enough space to operate in the space you are in. Come through Halasana, hands firmly on your back. Lift the legs up. Keep a little space around the throat. Remember that pharmaceutical Sharon was telling us about? Well, here it is. In this pose, by turning upside down, I stimulate the endocrine system and I begin to produce dopamine, natural drug in the body, which will help bring me some euphoria, some good feelings, some positive energy. And I need that right now. I need that more than ever. So turn to these practices. They will deliver. Don't shy away. Don't think because you're underslept that you can't do these practices. Because you are consumed by news and stories online and on the TV. Don't replace your yoga practice with that. In fact, double up on your yoga practice. Do some practice in the morning as well as the evening. Right? Patanjali reminds us, Hatha Yoga Nusashanam. Yoga is happening right now. So get up, get into your practice. It'll deliver, I promise you. I'm talking from experience. On your exhale, you're gonna lower the feet overhead, come towards Halasana. Your feet reach the floor, interlace your hands, draw your arms long in one direction. Push the heels away in the opposite direction. Ujjayi breath here. And release your hands, press your arms down, keep the head on the floor, gently roll all the way onto your back. And then you're going to set up for a Bansiyasana fish pose. So you want your legs straight on the floor, arms close alongside the body, pushing in your forearms and elbows, lift the head up, bring the top of the head to the floor. Think of that throat chakra that you're purifying so you can clean up your speech. So the words that you choose coming out are not ones that are blaming, complaining, or explaining. But instead, words of upliftment, support, and love. Shavasana, just for about a minute after the practice is done when we go off of the YouTube channel you can take an extended 10 minute Shavasana see how the music works I didn't even plan this and there it is in my mix Sharon's offering to infuse a practice with Thy Will Be Done. In the music. Begin to awaken the body. Let's come to a seated position. And we're going to finish our practice for today. I'm so happy that I gave it a second attempt to give the teachings for today. It's important to extend ourselves a little bit further in this moment. I will be done. <laughs> we're going to finish with Om and Shanti. Sharon, 
finish the practice with our hands in prayer. We give acknowledgement to our inner teacher, the Sad Guru, giving thanks to all of our teachers, especially the highest teacher. Bound forward, Om Bolo, Sad Guru, Bhagavan Ki, Jai. Hari Om Tat Sat. Inhaling, come up. Nice to see all of you. Thank you so much for following today our reading of Sharon and the meditation part one with Brahmananda Saraswati. At this point, you can sit and meditate. I have a beautiful altar here I've created. I've got Hanuman, I've got Krishna, I've got Jesus from my mom, some candle, I've got Brahmana Saraswati, I've got uh, Swami Nirmalananda and Sri K. Patavi Joyce. You know, some things that make me want to sit, that are attractive to me, that make me want to sit and connect to that higher self. So We'll continue with our yoga lifestyle. I'm going to be doing some cooking instructions soon on some beautiful vegetarian cuisine, like a classic kitchen. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks for your attention. God bless you. Have a great day.